This visit is historic because it is only the third ever from a country south of the Sahara and the first since Ghana obtained its independence in 1957. At the same time, today is the logical consequence of a lengthy development because relations between Switzerland and Ghana have for decades been characterized by mutual respect. Not every connection between our two countries can be deduced at first glance. Take the gold frenally, or I can translate the traditional gold coin and the chocolate coins, both products that every child here grows up with and which are considered typically Swiss. But neither would exist without gold and cocoa, which we import on a large scale from Ghana. It is quite simple. We need the raw materials and you have the raw materials. The resulting trade and business should benefit both countries. This principle is part of mutual respect. Gold and cocoa can create work and wealth in both countries. Excellency the President and members of the Federal Council, I've had the privilege of visiting Switzerland several times since becoming President of the Republic of Ghana. My last visit was to Davos nearly a month ago, where I participated in the 50th anniversary meeting of the World Economic Forum. At the invitation of its founder and executive chairman, the world-renowned Professor Klaus Schwab. Happily, it is much warmer here in Bern. <laughs> I thank President Simonetta Sumaruga, head of the seven-member Federal Council, for the honor of this state visit and for the opportunity to make this brief statement in the Federal Assembly, Switzerland's two-century-old House of Parliament. Excellences of the Federal Council, Relations between our two countries date back to the 19th century, when the Basel missionaries arrived in the then Gilkos, now Ghana, to undertake evangelical work. The missionaries pioneered the establishment of educational institutions across the country, including our first agricultural school at Acropon, my paternal hometown, in the eastern region of the country. Indeed, my own late father, President of Ghana's Second Republic, who was deeply imbued with the Presbyterian attributes of discipline, industry, integrity, and thrift, was a famous product of a Cropon's celebrated Salem School. They also credited with the establishment of health facilities, including a missionary hospital at Agogo in the Ashanti region, and were instrumental in the spread of the cultivation of cocoa a commodity which has been for the last century the mainstay of the Ghanaian economy. The Christian community in Ghana is greatly indebted to the Basel missionaries who are also responsible for the translation of the Bible from English into two of the main Ghanaian languages and who have been accorded due honor by us. The names of Interilios, Andreas Rees, Johannes Gottlieb Christela and Prince Ramsey continue to reverberate in our history and collective memory. I've also personally benefited from these very good relations because the first European head of state to visit Ghana when I assumed office as the fifth president of Ghana's Fourth Republic on 7 January 2017 was your 91st president, Her Excellency Mrs. Doris Lutard. Excellencies, in recent times, the ties of friendship and cooperation between our two countries have grown even stronger. Technical and financial assistance from the Swiss government, which has provided to the Kofi Annan International Peacekeeping Training Center, have helped it carry out its activities and achieve its vision of becoming the preferred center on the continent for training, education, and research in matters of African peace and security. Again, in September 2014, the Swiss government provided assistance to Ghana, which helped ensure that the country 
did not record a single case of Ebola, the virus which unfortunately ravaged some neighboring countries in West Africa. In May 2017, our two countries signed a 2.6 million United States dollar remittance grant facility to help lower the cost of remitting money to Ghana. Ghana is currently Switzerland's largest trading partner in sub-Saharan Africa, larger from the export of gold and cocoa to Switzerland and the import of chemical and pharmaceutical products, as well as light machinery and military equipment from Switzerland. However, as I have stated on an occasion, Ghana no longer wants to be dependent on the production and export of raw materials, including cocoa beans. We intend to process more and more of our cocoa in our country with the aim of producing more chocolate ourselves because we believe that there can be no future prosperity for the Ghanaian people in the short, medium or long term if we continue to maintain economic structures that are dependent on the production and export of raw materials. We intend to add value to our raw materials industrialize and enhance agricultural productivity. This is the best way we can put Ghana at the high end of the value chain in the global marketplace and create jobs for the teeming masses of Ghanaians. It is for this reason that my government continues to put in place a number of measures aimed at attracting investment into Ghana as well as stimulating growth of the private sector. We have succeeded over the last three years in ensuring that all our macroeconomic indices are pointing in the right direction. Cut our fiscal deficit, introduce a monetary policy that is stabilizing the currency and reducing significantly the cost of borrowing, and have introduced a raft of tax cuts which are bringing relief to and encouraging businesses. These interventions have led to to Ghana recording an annual GDP average growth rate of 7% since 2017, making us consistently one of the world's fastest growing economies during the period. We are one of the most business friendly economies in Africa, evidenced in our status as the largest recipient of foreign direct investment in West Africa. Ghana has also been selected to host the Secretariat of the African Continental Free Trade Area, a market of some 1.2 billion people with a combined GDP of US 3 trillion American dollars. It is the world's largest free trade area since the formation of the World Trade Organization. Our goal is to make Ghana the hub of trade in Africa, and thus serving notice on Swiss investors to take advantage of the growing business-friendly climate in Ghana and of our unique position as host of the AFCFTA Secretariat to set up joint venture enterprises in our country and thereby access this huge market that the free trade area presents. Excellencies, Madam President, I'm pleased to inform you that our country is fully committed to a democratic present and future where respect for individual liberties and human rights, the rule of law, and the principles of democratic accountability are at the core of our body politic. Ghana stands shoulder to shoulder with Switzerland in our joint determination to promote and protect human rights across the globe. I'm hopeful that as we shape the future of Ghana and position Ghanaian enterprises to compete effectively on the world stage, we have friends such as the Swiss Confederation to support us in this objective. We are determined in Ghana to ensure that succeeding generations of Ghanaians do not become victims or pawns of the international economic order, but her beneficiaries. Indeed, the project is a Ghana beyond aid, a Ghana which has discarded a mindset of dependency, aid, charity, and handouts and is charting a path of self-reliance in her progress, fashioned out of the intelligent and disciplined use of her considerable human and material resources. <laughs>